Hey everyone, Chaos Prime here, and today I want to talk about the state Anthem is in. What I would like to see changed, improved, and potentially added to the game further to improve it. I do feel at this point, especially when it comes to the PC release, a Rainbow Six type health update may be needed, and honestly, might be worthwhile doing this before the DLC is even looked at. Yes, I'm talking about Echoes of Reality. I know people don't want to see it delayed, but at this point, it may just be required. There are a number of things I want to touch, so I want to get into the video as soon as possible. With that said, the Anthem giveaway is almost over. If you want to be in with a chance of winning this, click on the link in the description below and or the link in the pinned comment for a chance to enter. On with the video. So there are a number of things I feel need to be addressed and or features I would like to see. Obviously the features I would like to see are stuff that will come at a later point, but the stuff that needs to be addressed is quite a bit. A lot of them are actually quality of life improvements, like for example, in free play, I'd like to see placed waypoints, I know they've said they're looking forward to this, but this needs to come sooner rather than later. It makes free play a chore at times, especially when you're playing in a group of four, and if you deviate from your point, you're constantly having to look at your map, and it just ruins the whole immersion. Add more events, from my experience and what I'm hearing endgame, the dynamic world events are not in plentiful supply. They need to not only be in more supply, but also visible to the player when they do appear. And this brings me on to the next topic. They need to increase the detection range for world events, or place them on the map so we can navigate to them and experience them. Currently if you're not in the close proximity, you will miss them or maybe they just won't appear full stop. And this is a real shame because they are part and parcel of what makes free play fun. Currently you're only allowed four players in the free realm world. Well, it's free play, so have more than four. Allow us to go in with six or eight. It is free play, right? So just let us live on the wild side. It's not like it's a stronghold or it's gonna be a cataclysm or it's gonna be a story mission. Nothing like this, it's just free roam. And why not just let us live on the wild side? I think this would be a really good change. Obviously it's not a bug, this is one of the things that I would like to see introduced. Keeping on with the world events, if you get down, well, if you respawn, you, you get respawned all the way back, and then you have to make your way all the way back to the world event, if you can even remember where it is if you're in a group. Well, at this point, what I feel they should do is if you are down and you respawn, you literally spawn outside of the world event, and then you can just continue where you left off. There's no disruption to service, there's no disruption to your gameplay, and you can just continue. Because it's really hard, even with the party widget, to notice someone that's down. So if they are down, don't respawn them 7 miles away, just respawn them next to the event so they can continue and take part. The worst thing is being respawned all the way back, and by the time you get to the world event, it's finished. It's just a waste of time, and I think something like this should have been implemented from the get-go. Now I know we have the compass at the top which is supposed to indicate where enemies are, where they're coming from, and other things like this, but a small minimap would have been nice, even if it's just like a small round L compass like you do have in Final Fantasy XIV that you can either position in your top right or your top left, something to basically give you some form of spatial awareness. I think this would have been really cool, and if it's added at a certain point it would be a great quality of life improvement. So this one's a pretty big one. Loot limit in free play. I don't think there should be a loot limit, and if there is, it definitely needs to be a lot bigger than what we have now. Because as of right now, especially with the long loading times, you're pretty much after your full going to have to go back to Fort Tarsis, empty out what you don't want, and then head back. And that's just a chore, because not everyone might have full items, and it's just really counterintuitive. So the simple option is, either drastically increase the amount of loot you can get from free play, or simply just don't put a limitation on it. Private free play, why not? If I want to go into the world on my own or with one of my friends, why can't I have this option? It's free play, why can't I have this option? This is something I complained about in the VIP demo, the open demo, this is something I believe really needs to be a thing. Now don't get me wrong, I appreciate why they've done it like this, but at the same time, if I want to do that, I should have the choice to do that. You can't do anything story related or end game related in free play, so why shouldn't I be able to do this? Make it so during cataclysmic events, private servers are disabled, fine, but if I want to go in there, give me the option. Choice is everything. 
there's no reason to remove choice. So this next one can apply to free play if you're in a no respawn area, but generally applies to missions. They need to change the down status fast. It needs to happen quickly because it completely ruins gameplay. Currently, if you go down and your teammate doesn't notice that you're down, you are stuck there. The only other way you can come back is by sh hard shutting the game down and rebooting it and joining the game in progress, thus potentially losing all the loot you had. This is not advisable and definitely not a good workaround. What they need to do is provide a system where you can indicate to your teammates that you are down because the widget just isn't enough. Believe me, I've played it and it's not enough. I completely missed the fact that my friend went down. So the two solutions that I have personally is your cipher pointing out that you have a down player. I mean, that's a no-brainer one, right? That's pretty simple. Your cipher just turns around and goes, oh no, your teammate is down. Go get him. Something similar to this would work because it would immediately alert all other free players that your teammate is down if you miss the visual cue. The alternative way would be a pulse system to show the other players that you're down, much like they do in Apex Legends. I mean, it's owned by EA, right? So they could easily take that system and put it into Anthem. And it's not like the pulse system is a new system or a trademarked system. It is pretty much a standard system that many, many games use. So something like this, where it will pulse and indicate to other players with a visual cue that you are down would easily work. The Fort Tarsus movement speed update can't come enough. The 15th clearly didn't receive it, at least I'm hoping it didn't, because it is still god awfully slow. Hopefully the 22nd will finally fix this. In terms of game modes, I think a horde mode would actually work really well in Anthem, especially with the setup of the creatures, the scars and everything else, I think a horde mode would actually work really really well here. As long as the reward system is actually worthwhile, and the reward system is actually rewarding enough, I think this would be a grand addition to Anthem. As well as that, a photo mode. I mean, the game looks beautiful, especially on PC. It looks amazing. I saw some videos for the first time on running on PC at max settings, and my god was I jelly. Compared to my PS4 Pro, the PC just is miles ahead. The lighting, everything was just jaw-dropping. So, a photo mode, for those high res, high textured moments would be fantastic for all involved. Xbox One, PS4 and PC. At least that's my opinion. But again, these are features that can come at a later date, but it is something that I would like to see added eventually to the game. So next I move on to a couple of things that I actually had a gripe with. We have no victory music theme once you complete a mission. I mean, who doesn't like a victory fanfare? You have no time to pose for your enemies being defeated. In the stronghold we had during the demo, you got two seconds, and at the end of missions right now, you still have two seconds. This was a big complaint at the end of This was a big complaint at the end of the VIP demo, a big complaint at the open demo. I don't understand why it's so difficult to extend that two second timer to say ten seconds, so you can chill and show off with your friends and, you know, use those emos that you're buying. You know, have some use for them, not just in the open world, but you know parade that you've just defeated an enemy. I mean, why not? And finally on this topic, there's like no shiny treasure chest at the end. After a stronghold, I expect to see a shiny chest bursting with goodies for me to collect. There is no pride and accomplishment after a hard stronghold. There really needs to be. You need to feel that you're being rewarded, not just at the end reward screen where it all comes up, but you want to see that treasure chest open up and burst with all the shinies that are coming out, right? I mean, that's what we're playing for. It's a looter shooter in the end. Other issues like no primary stats page to see what your gear and ability is giving you. You've got mods that are giving you or weapons that are giving you 10% more damage, 3% more this and 5% more that. But what's the base? You have no idea. So technically it could be giving you 0.01 for all you know. You just don't know. So at this point, I think this is a massive overlook, something that really should have been there day one. And I think this as a priority needs to be in there ASAP. There's no tooltips for almost anything in the game either, including things like gear damage. I mean, what is that exactly? I don't know. I genuinely don't know what gear damage is. You've got base damage, and that's for your base weapons, I believe. You've got gear damage. Is that for your actual L1 and R1 abilities? I don't know. I genuinely don't know because the game doesn't tell you. 
Primers and detonators are fundamental to the game. They are part of the core structure. If you want to be dealing uber damage, you're pretty much going to need to understand how primers and detonators work. There is literally nothing in the game that explains this. Nothing at all. This should have been part of some form of range or some form of tutorial after you finish the early mission. But at some point they needed to explain this to you. They simply cannot rely on YouTubers and content creators to tell people how to do this stuff. That's just silly. This needed to be in the game and it's not. And this applies to many, many things. Clear definition of objectives. It's all missing. Daily, weekly, monthly trials. You would be fine if you assumed there was only one objective. I assumed the same thing until it was shown to me that after looking deeper into the cortex, there's many more. I assumed there was one daily challenge, one weekly challenge and one monthly. And the monthly one didn't look that long anyway. And I was thinking to myself, you know, it's not that long. Maybe they're just doing it for week one and trying to get you used to it. But looking deeper into the cortex, you immediately see that there is a plethora of challenges there. Why isn't all of these listed on the actual bulletin board that you're looking at? Why is it only showing you one? This sort of thing needs to be addressed immediately and users need to be directed to the correct place so they can see this stuff because they are clearly missing it. Arcanists, freelancers, sentinels, it's all really ambiguous at present. It feels disjointed at times. You're being rewarded and half the time you don't understand why. You're just going out into a free play mission, you're doing stuff and you're getting faction XP. But why am I getting this faction XP? What am I doing that's rewarding me? Don't get me wrong, I'm all in favour of being rewarded for actually playing the game. I think this is a good thing. But understanding why I'm being rewarded is great. The medal system at the reward screen. No explanation as to what these are. You pretty much have to work them out yourself. I mean, it's not rocket science, don't get me wrong. You do pretty much understand that the medals themselves are XP. They reward you with different levels. And if you go into the cortex, you can see this. But again, there is nothing telling you to go there to see this stuff. They need to, at the very least, at the beginning, hold your hand a little. And there is nothing here. Abilities, skills. I mean, Battlefield 5 is an EA game and they do this perfectly fine. You look at a grenade, you look at a flame grenade, you look at a turret, it has a small video showing you what it looks like. This sort of short video presentation has to, it has to come in to Anthem. And if it doesn't, it needs a firing range for you to be able to go to to test these abilities out. Because having to load into free play, which takes about two minutes on average, is painful just to test an ability out and then turn around and say eh, I don't like it and then it's two minutes back in there it's it's just it's just not productive at all and it needs to change either add short videos descriptions to showcase what they are or simply add a firing range of some sort in the launch bay so we can go there and test this stuff out the launch bay is there there is no reason why we can't utilize that area for this sort of thing however again it's not priority but it is something that needs to be addressed so this next one I just touched on, load times and the long load times. It turns out the game is currently optimized for SSDs. The day one patch will optimize for 5400 and 7200 RPM hard drives. This is a shame, this should have been said earlier. I know there's a couple of people out there that actually went and bought an SSD because they wasn't aware of this fact, just so they can improve the load speeds. But it seems the February 15th early access launch was only optimized for SSDs. Why, I don't know. But rest assured, at least in the day one patch, 5400 and 7200 RPM hard drives are being optimized and looked at. Multiple load screens and tethering. The tethering is so unforgiving. There was time during the Xbox One early access, I actually missed part of my mission. I had to leave the mission halfway through because some other person decided that I'm gonna go straight through and skip everything and force me to miss certain aspects of the mission. Now, I don't care if that ruins other people's gameplay. If you're ruining mine by not letting me experience a story as someone who is fundamentally driven by story, I will leave that game instantly. And this is not a fault of your own because you're just mindless and going on as a drone. That's fine. But by the way, you need to sort this out. You need to make the tethering a hell of a lot more lenient because simply put, in its current state, it's punishing and it's ruining the experience of players that actually want to experience the story 
because one jackass decides he wants to race through and speed run the mission. I mean, if you want to do that, guys, all for it. Do it. That's why solo plays there. But don't ruin the experience for others. And I know what you're going to say. The same thing applies to me. If I want to experience the story, go solo. But come on, reduce the tethering. And I appreciate that. That is a valid point. Lessen the strictness of the tethering. Don't give me a load screen after load screen after load screen because one guy decides to go to the end of the mission and skip everything. It's not fair on the other players. And that will just mean more and more people are going to leave the game and more and more people are going to be stuck there with one frame. The teleportation warning hides the heat gauge and, and by golly that is one horrendous thing that you can see. My friend Mad Cow and me were flying along and he could not see his heat gauge and he went crashing down because he couldn't see he had to dive to uh, call his javelin and boom he crashed down and had to wait for his javelin to cool down don't get me wrong it only takes a few seconds to cool down that's fine but why would a notification hide the heat gauge i mean come on this shouldn't happen so fix it the ability to replay missions that you've already completed this was something again that was mentioned many many a time especially when Bioware brought the conversation up. This is something that was naturally always going to be a controversial point. Now I understand it didn't make it for day one. That is fine, but it needs to be in there. But at least it needs to be in there and it should have been thought about because then you could have daily heroic missions on Grandmaster 1 or Grandmaster 2 or Grandmaster 3. Something to add to the end game to reward you with end game rewards. Something like this, something Destiny did in the past in Destiny 1 extremely well. They had daily heroic missions, weekly strikes, weekly nightfalls. Something like this would be really good where it rewards you with a guaranteed high-end reward. So things like this would be good, right? Everyone likes it. And plus, the Bioware story is good. People want to revisit the story. They shouldn't have to depend on playing with other friends that haven't completed the story in order to be able to do this. So Bioware, please fix this. And I can actually confirm that Ben has officially commented, yes, the Ben Irving, that this is now being looked into with the notion to add it into the game for players to have the option to actually replay missions at their own free will. So thumbs up from me. The ping system in Apex Legends is legendary. Let's make no mistake about this. Seeing as it's EA, absolutely no reason it cannot be incorporated here. It would work so well here, especially with Anthem and the way it's designed, be it for resources, chests, enemy bosses. I mean, highlighting a boss in between a bunch of enemies that you're fighting will be so helpful and beneficial to everyone involved. So I think something like this, especially the ping system, because it just works so well in Apex Legends and it is EA. So I think the ping system in Anthem would be legendary. I think it would work so, so well and I hope they introduce it into the world of Anthem. Now, I don't play on PC, so I'm not experiencing the issues others are, but I'm not getting the people falling through the floors, or cutscenes not loading, or sound issues, so I genuinely can't comment on this having played primarily on the PS4 during the demo and the VIP demo, and the early access on the Xbox. I'm just not experiencing this, so either it's a sole PC issue, or literally, I'm just one lucky guy that literally is not experiencing these issues. I'm just not. If I was, it would have been in here with the rest of the list that I've put out. But it's literally not something I've experienced. And I've played another three, four missions in the 10 hours that I had. And I still haven't experienced any of the horrific issues that people are reporting on the PC. So that aside, I do think they are PC isolated. I can't confirm it but I can say that I'm not experiencing them. So that brings me to my final closing points. What I can say is that the topics I've spoken about really need to be dealt with. Not the ones that I'd like to see added to the game, not the ones that will be additional experiences, but more the quality of life fixes, the bugs and things like this. Obviously some are not priority, whereas others are, but ultimately all will aid the game going forward. As I started off, I did say, that a Rainbow Six style health update would possibly benefit Anthem, and I'll stand by that. I genuinely do believe at this point, a health update to fix issues over the next month will probably benefit the game more in the long run than just releasing Echoes of Reality in March and leaving people with potentially even more bugs. 
So, and going by what I've seen Ubisoft do with Rainbow Six, giving it the health update it needed to actually fix the game, I think at this point there's no stopping the release on the 22nd, and I don't want it to because the game, at least on console, is pretty solid, but right now I think a health update much akin to Rainbow Six is needed, and with that the game should finally be in a good place to call complete. Well, that's where I'm going to stop the video guys, thanks for watching, hope this was informative and I'll see you in the next video. Remain Legend.